The purpose or intent of what's called the establishing, obviously you're establishing the world and the characters and kind of the, the tone of the piece and whether there's going to be comic. In this case, the, the comedy kind of naturally kind of grows out of the family drama. But it's all building towards what's called the catalyst. And the catalyst is going to raise the main question in the plot that's going to get answered in the end. And so in this case, the question is raised, will Olive become Little Miss Sunshine? Now, in many heroines' journey, there's a question like this that gets raised, but it's really kind of a container for everything that's going to happen within the family. And what's unique about heroines' journeys and how they function is that the change in the hero's journey in drama, the hero goes through a major kind of death and rebirth and transformation. And in that transformation, he or she brings that new wisdom back to the society. So what's unique about heroine's journey is that the change doesn't happen in the main character. When we're looking at family drama, the antagonist in family drama is usually either who? The patriarch or the matriarch the mother or the father. And what's unique about Heroine's journey is that the change and transformation, if it's going to be a life-affirming ending, there are movies like, OK, my French pronunciations are terrible. So I'm just going to give you the Chicago pronunciation of this film, which is Dangerous Liaisons. In, in that film, the matriarch, whose name I can't pronounce either, it's some, it, the, uh, the Glenn Close character, it's like the Marquise de Mature, <laughs> something like that, doesn't change. And it's a life negating ending. It's a tragic faded ending. But what we find in heroines' journeys, and it's not, I don't want to suggest that you need to always move towards a life affirming ending, although we need those kind of endings, that if you are telling a story that is solution-oriented, like this film, and you have a life-affirming ending, that the change and transformation almost inevitably happens in the antagonistic character who is either the father or the mother. And what we find is that for our heroine, that the heroine tends to have a value that is instilled by the guide. And we'll see a scene where, a couple scenes, where the grandfather, Edwin, is Olive's guide. That the, the heroine experiences conflict by being steadfast about their values and dealing with the opposition from those values. And so the heroine is always being tested. And there are times where the heroine can even go into kind of depression when they get tested so severely. If you know the, the myth of Psyche and Eros, that when Psyche has to go through all of these different trials and tribula tribulations that her dark mother-in-law is making her do in order to be able to get back together with, with Eros, in between every trial, like gathering seeds, the ants help her gather seeds, or getting the fleece that the reeds in the water help her to kind of find a tricky way to do it by getting the fleece off of the, the bushes that the, the sheep are going by, that there can be these kind of ups and downs of the heroine. But the main thing is that the guide, in this case the grandfather, is instilling values in the heroine. And the opposition and conflict comes from them trying to maintain those values in the face of opposition. So this is a real key thing to understand, because in, in kind of generic dramaturgy, the main character goes through a kind of death and rebirth and transformation. And by transforming, they're able to achieve their goals. But when we look at heroine's journeys, they're really about the whole network of characters. And so what's going to change is not Olive doesn't change. This is a, a rite of passage story. She learns things, and she's maturing, but she doesn't have to change who she is. And the power of the heroine's journey is maintaining her sense of values through all the opposition that gets greater and greater and greater and greater. So 
what you want to be looking for in the opening of your story. And again, generate your stories first. And then you can bring in these tools like the plot curve as like editing tools to kind of look at all of this. But in a heroine's journey, in the opening of the heroine's journey, what you want to be doing is you want to be establishing what's called the mode of each one of the characters. Now, some people talk about the want of the character or the desire of the character. But the mode is something that encompasses the, the actions and decisions of each one of these characters. Every action and every decision is going to be revealing their attitudes going to be revealing their attitudes, values, and beliefs. And so when we're creating stories, it's always this kind of cyclical process where we keep coming back to the opening. And you really ask yourself, how can I visually reveal who this character is? Not just what their desires are, that Dwayne wants to be a jet fighter pilot, but what is his attitudes, values, and belief about life? And that's why they take time to introduce each one of the characters. We start on the close-up of Olive, and we see the reflection of the Miss America contest that she's watching. You know, we see um, Dwayne exercising, getting ready to be a jet fighter pilot. Cheryl goes to pick up Frank at the hospital. Now, Frank is the character that is carrying the family wound. So the family wound is something that stays in the subtext and is gradually coming into the text. So in, in this case, everybody shares this wound because it has to do with the fear of failure when it comes to career and relationship. And his fear of failure was so great that when he experienced it, he tried to kill himself.